Greetings and welcome to LGR Oddware, where we're taking a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, and obsolete, like the Power Mouse by Prohance. This is something that you get when you choose the future. And here we are. This is the Prohance Power Mouse, as I've already mentioned. And first, I also have to mention that this is a donation from Ryan, who is a viewer of LGR. Thank you very much, sir. What have you done? Anyway, this, as I said, is what you get when you choose the future, apparently. And this particular version, you can kind of see with that little sticker in the top right that's been marked out. At one point, this cost $180, apparently it was bought on clearance. Before that, though, this was actually a $295 kit, and it was released as such in 1990 by Prohance Technologies, based in Sunnyvale, California. But then this was at a time when a two-button Microsoft mouse, just a basic mouse, cost $150. The whole big deal about this, though, is that it is a 40-button device. You see some different mouse and input devices today with a whole lot of buttons, but this takes the cake as far as anything that I have in my collection. It is absolutely absurd. So the whole elevator sales pitch, I suppose, for this back in the day was that it came with these pre-programmed key definition tables that you could apply to all these different buttons and then swap them out with faceplates and whatever for whatever program you needed it to. Spreadsheets, word processors, desktop publishers, computer-aided design, anything with CAD it's supposed to be really good with. At least that was the idea. Although InfoWorld's review in 1990 said it was clearly not a candidate for most users, hard to hold, hard to maneuver, and awkward to control. This was just the lowest scoring thing they reviewed at that time. And the president of Prohance, Kirk McKenzie, actually wrote into them later and said they missed the whole point. And their users were always saying how much it improved their productivity and far exceeded expectations. Really defensive there. But, you know, he's the president of the company. What is he supposed to say? They also made 3 and 12 and 17 button input devices, some with a lot of buttons, some with trackballs on top. It didn't really seem to matter because by the mid-90s, 1995, at the latest, the company was dissolved, and Prohance was picked up by a whole lot of other companies. At least the name was. This product is sort of faded from existence. The inside of this flap here is, uh, <laughs> it's pretty entertaining and also just revealing, too. Uh, just trying to sell you so much on all of these features. Incredibly versatile. Look, it's a mouse, a numpad, a function pad, a joystick, remote device, digitizing tablet, all these things, and probably more. The Power Mouse. So much better than those nice keyboards. Just say no to keyboards. Use the Power Mouse. And yeah, I guess I could maybe see some appeal if you didn't have a numpad on your laptop at the time, but, uh, you know, just get an external numpad. Why do you need this? I don't know. And I also find this just... <laughs> Look at this! Uh, it, it, the people that use this, alright? It unleashes your imagination. It's used by handicapped people, construction people, and Steppenwolf. <laughs> what a thing to lump it all together with. Um... Yeah, the right group, Steppenwolf. I guess you have to be born to be wild to use this. Well, actually, this was like 1989, 1990 when this packaging was made. So I guess that was during like the John Kay and Steppenwolf eras. So I don't know what their songs were at that point. You'll also notice this little doohickey attached to it right there with the little crosshair. Um, that doesn't actually come with this. So I guess they were just sort of saying, hey, if you want to add other stuff, you could. But then again, you could add that same kind of little crosshair to any mouse. This is nothing special. Yeah, let's open up the inside of this. And it's a quite neatly made little package, I gotta say. So yeah, inside you get the manual for the Power Mouse 100. <laughs> Reminds me of Power Man 10,000 or 9,000 or whatever that band was. 5,000? I don't know. So uh, yeah, it's it's a manual. This is um, surprisingly detailed for as simple and easy as they say it is on the outside of the box. Uh, you also get this little, little software package sleeve. So inside of this is what we're gonna get as far as the software to run it. And uh, you need this because as I said, it is proprietary. It's not like just generic mouse drivers, Microsoft compatible or anything. So this is the three and a half inch, five and a quarter inch version. And then it also comes with this Prohance AutoCAD power pack. And um, this is such a joke, an absolute joke. So this is what made this one cost a hundred dollars more than the models without this. This right here is simply just a bunch of configs, like text files 
to tell it how to use this mouse with AutoCAD. And the thing is, you can set that up yourself. You don't even need this, so that's useless. Um, this little fold-out thingy here that says, oh, look at all these advantages and, and things. Um, while it does have a very handy reference for its pre-made AutoCAD settings, it again is absolutely useless. You can figure that out on your own or just program stuff yourself. The only other thing that sets this apart and supposedly makes it worth that $100 is this little faceplate. That little custom made piece of plastic, that worthless disc and that little fold out sheet is $100 apparently. I don't think so. But yeah, it does come with the idea of um, you know custom faceplates, which is something that was done quite a bit with different like keyboard add-ons, for instance, during the 80s and into the 90s. And maybe it's still done today, I don't know. A lot of times it would just be an overlay like paper, but these are actually plastic and clip onto the front of the power mouse itself. It also comes with uh, the ball, which you have to install into the bottom there. And um, we have a different uh, serial port adapter here. So we have the nine pin to 25 pin, depending on the type of serial you're gonna be plugging it into. And then of course we have the mouse itself. And yeah, this is, uh, it's not small. <laughs> it's not small at all. And it's got a lot of buttons, 40 of them. So you have uh, two mouse buttons, one right here, one right here. These are customized uh, buttons that you can use for different functions and programs and also set up, like program your own macros with the software that it comes with. And this is just like uh, normal keyboard stuff here, uh, along with some function things. Like if you have to press F1, you press function F1. Let's just go ahead and demonstrate that. I'm gonna plug this in and uh, see what you get. First things first though, we've got to install the ball. Otherwise it's not gonna work. So yeah, that just goes right in the bottom of there, and uh, yeah, pretty standard mouse stuff. Let's get some software going. Okay, so I've got the Prohance Pro Mouse plugged in here to my wonderful Compact Presario 425, one of my favorite older computers, and uh, yeah, the software is installed. Really, the, just this one disc is needed. The five and a quarter inch is just a thing if you don't have three and a half inch drive, and the other disc, as I mentioned before, I think is uh, pretty well useless if you don't have AutoCAD. So yeah, let me just show you how to use this thing. So you can either have it configure this to just set itself up automatically with autoexec.bat and stuff, but I, I don't want to do that because I have other things on here and I'm not going to be using this frequently. So we'll go over to the Prohance folder and you'll be able to see here some different things on screen. So we have a uh, test program, Power.com, which is the most basic version of this driver. Power Ed, which is an editor. Power Cell, which is a selector program. And a couple of others for editing and help for other applications that I'm not even going to be using. So we're just going to load the Power Cell here. And uh, yeah, that should just put it right into its default configuration, which as it is here, this is just a sort of generalized setup which makes the up, down, left, right of the mouse movement um, equate to what the arrow keys would do, since I actually have DOS key enabled. So that's bringing up my previously used commands. Uh, and that's that's all it does here. However, if we bring up the, press the menu button on the power mouse itself, it lets you choose from all of these other key definition tables. And this really is the key to making this thing work with other applications, at least in theory. <laughs> so if I were to move it over into um, mouse mode, uh, let me just try edit here, for instance. Uh, okay, yeah, so it is, edit is treating this just like as a normal mouse. So I can, um, yeah, I can navigate the readme file that came with the power mouse and select and click and like do things. Uh, that I normally could with any other mouse. But what makes this thing supposedly special though, right, is the fact that it has all of these other buttons. So what the heck do they do? Well, of course, we've got the numpad, which is just literally a numpad. It's the same as this. <laughs> in fact, anything that you can do on here is the same as what you can do on a keyboard. It's supposed to be more convenient over here. I'm not convinced, and let me show you why. So we're gonna go into PowerCell here and load the one, two, three definition file, table, whatever. And if I go over here into Lotus one, two, three, which is version 2.2 .2 that I have on here, it was contemporary at the time this was released, more or less. Um, we'll see that I am actually able to 
move it around. And really, it's still doing... This, this program doesn't have mouse support, so it, it's just giving you a pseudo-mouse support by the arrow key movement. And yes, it does squeak. And also, it makes this really horrible noise when you go up against the edges of the uh, tables. <laughs> That's yeah, pretty bad. Um, so, but yeah, that's that's you're gonna get that sort of by pressing down the arrow keys. It's just this pulls so much quicker, and um, yeah, I mean you can do Lotus one two three thingies, and um, that's cool. It's like oh yeah, I got a numpad right here. I can just change it on the fly. Oh my god, like it's so useful and fast. And not really. I uh, for one, it is super 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 sensitive. And yes, you can turn that down. This is on I think the 200 DPI setting right now, so it's. Insanely sensitive, which is why I'm getting that sound. Um, but even if you turn it down, it's still just not... It doesn't feel right, because this isn't a mouse cursor. This is literally this. This right here feels good and precise, like I know what I'm doing. I, I will at least show you that, like, there's some of these other things that are pretty cool. Like, you can insert some uh, rows right here, or columns like this, or you can adjust the width on the fly. I mean, that's... A handy in a pinch, but let me try something else. So we're gonna go over into um, Pro Oops, Pro Hance once again, and we're gonna go into the Word Perfect thing. Hopefully, we'll have that. Okay, and I opened up uh, the Power Editor now, and so this you can actually see what it is doing. These are all of the functions that it has mapped out to the pro mouse so I mean, this really is just like a key mapper like you would see in an emulator or any other thing that has a key mapper in any program ever so yeah you can see that it's got all of this stuff in normal mode just mapped to the numpad and other um, sort of just like functions and whatnot that you would see in word perfect it's just that there's so many things that you have to remember on top of what you already have to remember and you have the little overlay that goes on there, and it's got the basic one on here right now. It says copy, move, sum, erase, and whatnot. But those change with every time you press function, or user, or shift, or control, or you know, any of those. And this manual only helps so much because this is a very generalized thing. Like, for instance, this right here is a selection of stuff for word processing. And this will give you a reference, but this isn't the same for every word processor. In fact, title becomes page break, window becomes window, column becomes tab set, width becomes margins. I mean, some of them make sense, some of them don't. Um, but yeah, word perfect right here. Yeah. And, um, sure. Copy that. Yeah, I can copy things. It's great. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing at all. <laughs> um, so sure, I, I guess if you got used to this <laughs> and totally relearned your entire workflow, maybe this would be easier, but I don't know. For two reasons, I don't think this makes any friggin' sense. Uh, just because this, everything is clearly laid out. It's a keyboard, man. This is not that hard. Especially for keyboard programs. It's it's useful if you are recording macros, which I don't know any for these programs, so I haven't done that. But um, again, a lot of these programs have macros built into them, and you can just use them through a keyboard combination, or there's extra software that you can get to just do a macro and make them for any program that doesn't have them. So you can just have a memory resonant thing like the one that it's using right here and have macros uh, the other really big reason that I don't understand anything about this is because look at these friggin' tiny little keys. They're so small and and just absolutely not enjoyable to use. They also take a lot of pressure to press down. This whole thing is just clumber, clumber, clumbersome? <laughs> Clumby? It's clumby and clumbersome and it doesn't feel right when it moves. It squeaks. It's heavy. Ah. Uh. Now the other big area that this seriously fails is in one of its big selling points, using Power Mouse as a mouse, the most versatile mouse on the market. Okay, well, the thing is, it's not compatible with anything except its own silly drivers. So, like, if something is looking for a very basic mouse input on COM1, it will probably maybe work. 
But if it's like so many other things and it it's looking for a Microsoft compatible mouse, it's not gonna work at all. So I have the mouse definition, uh, you know, whatever, it's on right now. So say if I try to load something like SimCity 2000, which is gonna look for a Microsoft compatible mouse, it will not do it. You can try to load like a Microsoft compatible mouse driver, like mouse.com or executable, whatever, and it, it's not gonna do anything either. It's just gonna confuse it and overload the memory and it screws things up. Um, it just, it runs into all sorts of problems. I have been able to run them simultaneously. Like I have like a regular, just PS2 compatible mouse plugged in. That'll work in some cases. You can get both drivers to load at the same time, but again, you start to run out of memory and um, like conventional memory. Or like if I go into Windows 3.1 here, you just don't have a mouse at all. There's ju there's just no cursor. It completely disables it. And you might think, oh, well, maybe there's a driver for this. In fact, the manual even mentions that uh, you can install a mouse driver for Windows. Um, but it's not on this disc. I've checked all the discs. There are no mouse drivers whatsoever for Windows 3. Maybe they were for Windows 2 or something? I don't know, but this thing came out in 1990 and this particular disc is from 1991, so I would think there would be Windows 3 drivers in here, but nope, there are not. So it straight up does not work with Windows, even though it has a Windows preset. It's supposedly mapped like this right here to the clock, this right here to the task summary, this right here to tab, window selection, close window. Uh, that would be fine if it actually worked with Windows, but you try to press any of those in Windows 3, even in this mode, it'll just beep at you a whole lot and then eventually crash Windows. Maybe there's one last saving grace of this and that might be, I don't know, running it with games and doing absurd stuff that way. Uh, but no, it doesn't do that either, at least for the games that I would want to try it with, just, you know, because silly reasons. Um, like Doom here, for instance. Okay, you got the menu, um, because again, it's treating the mouse like a keyboard. So you would think that would work fine for the game, and uh, it does work for this. Like, you can basically just use it as a mouse, um, but that's doing literally nothing different than you couldn't already do with just a normal mouse. I thought about maybe trying to map it to the numpad, um, so then at least that would be something kind of interesting, like, oh, I can move around by pressing these little buttons, but no, Doom doesn't recognize any of these, or any of these. It recognizes the two mouse buttons and this. Even when I put it totally over into keyboard mode, it does this. So literally, this is no different than just running a regular mouse in Doom. Again, just to sort of illustrate my point here, you can go into Commander Keen and hit Use Keyboard, and it's like, okay, well, I want to change that to that, and you know, that to that, which, nope, the num, oh, this, yet again, doesn't work. None of these recognize whatsoever either, and in fact, you'd think since the mouse is mapped to arrow keys, that that would work, but nope, it doesn't work at all. It now no longer treats it as a keyboard, and uh, now those buttons don't work. Well, that's the Prohance Pro Mouse. Uh, this thing is absolutely boring. <laughs> you would think for a device with 40 buttons on there, you'd have some sort of cool possibilities. No, just stick to a, a keyboard and a normal mouse. You'll be fine. <laughs> what a silly thing. A silly thing indeed. And very much odd, which is why I just talked about it. And I hope you enjoyed this video on this thing. And if you did, then perhaps you'd like to see some of my other LGR Oddware episodes, as well as all sorts of other kinds of videos that I do every single week, every Monday and Friday here on LGR. And as always, thank you very much for watching.